We are less than two weeks from the presidential election. Things are happening in the stock market, in the gold market. You've got billionaires that are switching parties. You've got billionaires that hate Donald Trump predicting his win. I'm going to be going through all of these big stories with my special guest, Paul Stone. Paul, thank you for joining me again. Absolutely. My pleasure. Great to be here. So, so much going on. Let me give some background. Uh, Paul is a business owner, an American patriot. He's the founder of Colonial Metals Group. Um, I wanted to get your take on this. Uh, in the last few weeks, we've had two major hurricanes. Uh, in that time, we learned that FEMA, for disaster relief, spent three quarters of a billion dollars of American taxpayer money moving illegal immigrants into the country, 157 million of taxpayer money to Lebanon because Kamala was concerned about their citizens, and 2.4 billion more dollars of taxpayer money to Ukraine. Yet American food costs are up. Uh, the hurricane uh, relief was only a $750 loan if you could qualify. And Kamala Harris openly bragging about being compassionate to people outside of the United States. All of this, according to Zero Hedge. What are your thoughts on all of this? By the way, I love Zero Hedge. Um, you know, my thoughts are it's just more examples, very painful, destructive examples of government ineptitude. You know, it, our lives have been drawn into uh, considering that the government provides us our means for easy living. Uh, and they don't. They provide the means for painful, frustrating, agonizing living. You know, when you think of FEMA, right? So that's an organization of people that are told you guys need to look ahead, plan ahead. You're all talking about global warming. You're talking about more powerful and uh, storms happening more often in the Gulf states, right? In the uh, Southern Atlantic states. So why don't we have a jackpot of money that just sits there waiting for that storm to come that you guys are so damn sure is going to come. And then two of them come and they're not prepared. This is what I mean. The people really need to start looking at how they band together, how they count on each other and start ignoring what the government is doing because it can't be changed. But living a life that is separate and outside of depending on the government for helping you out, even FEMA, which seems so basic in, in their obligations and duties to the American people. Yeah. Uh, specifically, how about uh, Kamala Harris? She's running for president of the United States. And she says, you know, um, America, that we are worried about every citizen. And then you find out she's talking about Lebanon, like not even American citizens. Uh, I, I just I, I just don't see her being an America first president. I only see Donald oh, no. Trump talking compassionately. I mean, so I'm not crazy. No, I mean, come on. Look, let's so let's if we just trip back to when Trump's running for re-election and the Democrats are on the Diaz, uh, you know, raising their hand to get chosen for the money uh, to get the backing to actually run for the White House. And and the, the candidate that the money picks, the money that's sitting waiting to back somebody is an airhead named Joe Biden with dementia. And the vice presidential candidate they decide to put on the ticket is also an airhead with no experience doing really anything at all other than prosecuting cases. And that doesn't take too much brain power because they're only going to prosecute cases they know they're going to win. So all she has to do is memorize some facts and in what order she calls witnesses. And that's her job. So really created nothing. Biden never created anything. Neither did Kamala. So why, why is that important? Well, because the money runs the show. And so the money that ran these two goofballs into the White House is the same money that's now running Kamala for four more years. And when you think, God, you know, wouldn't the money want to pick someone who's dynamic and has created stuff and produced things and ran things and learned from life, you know, living out in the weather, as I call it? And they obviously don't because they really don't want someone who's going to do their own thinking. They just want someone who's going to sign whatever's put in front of them, read whatever it says on the teleprompter, and have no guilt, really. They're devoid of guilt of doing what they're doing, what they're doing, sending money to Lebanon after Israel you know, crushes them for the, for the attacks that continued happening over the last, whatever, four or five decades. Giving them money? It's ridiculous. So 
what we're in for and what you said less than two weeks now is going to reveal what the next four years in leadership at least is going to look like. Either you're not going to have any or the leadership you're going to have is that that billion dollar party, that radical left leaning left uh, radical uh, side to things politically uh, that's going to continue to to break our hearts, anger us and piss us off. And that's why I'm trying to say that even if Trump were to win, you're going to have the same group running money against everything that he's going to try to do. The next four years, the last four years have been uh, the foreshadowing for what I think comes, which is more unified government around the world, more of America shedding its greatness for for big you know, filling in big, big, nasty black holes all around the planet for which we really have no business being there sacrificing the Americans' future, their savings, their currency, their, their ideas about what their family is going to be based on uh, for, for global peace and global fairness. It's, um, it's extremely scary. Yeah. You know, as, as you were talking about this big pool of money backing Kamala Harris and Joe Biden, like it just made me think like, okay, so on, on a continuum, you have like a puppet, which would be Kamala Harris, mm -hmm. On the exact opposite, you have Trump, which like his lawyers can't control him. His advisors can't control. He's like the exact opposite of a puppet. Right. And yet yeah. the money is going towards the puppet and yeah. the puppet doesn't care about Americans. That's why we, we got to got to get her out. Let me let me switch gears over to, to Wall Street with you, Paul. Um, billionaire investor Stan Druckenmiller said, all Wall Street indicators are pointing towards a Donald Trump victory. Gold is up. Crypto is up. Banking stocks are up. He said this election isn't over and he doesn't like Trump or Harris. In fact, he called Donald Trump a blowhard. Uh, his words, not mine. But he said with, with these indicators rising, gold, banking stocks, crypto, he believes that those are indications of a Donald Trump victory. What, what are your thoughts on his words? I think, well, uh, yeah, you know, he swims in the world of finance. There's a lot of uh, future forward looking indicators that come for many, many different things in life from the securities and futures world that people look in, look at for providing insight. Um, you know, there's goofy ones, too, like something about the Washington Redskins now currently called the commanders. If they were to lose the game before the election, that indicated the challenger would win or you know something like that so there's indicators all over the place but when it comes down to it and what's kind of crazy and scary as well is you just look if you just look at both of them say business built a business built skyscrapers right uh built nothing most humans if we if we took this election back 30 40 years right how, what are we looking at we're looking at a donald trump landslide we're looking at kamala as mondale and trump as reagan because the people would say look i don't always like what he says but i need someone with experience running the country i don't want an airhead with an ideologue airhead with goofy ideas and misrepresents herself and can't even answer a question representing the country that's another stark comparison of just how far down this wormhole we've gone we are being dragged into something that we find quite foreign just by having this as the choices running for the White House. Trump is a businessman. He played football. He went to Wharton Business School. Who cares if he is a little flamboyant in how he talks or represents himself? When it comes down to the decision making, the choice making, you want someone who's been there before and got the T-shirt, not someone who's just auditioning for this job. Yeah. Well, and uh, I believe he's going to put pressure on interest rates. I think he's going to put pressure for, um, you know, producing more gas, more oil, more drilling. I mean, these are all things he's been very clear about, but he has a track record of, of doing that. Um, so yeah. it'll be really interesting uh, to see where it goes. Um, let, let me take you back to Kamala Harris. This is just absolutely ridiculous. Um, last week, uh, oh, maybe four or five days ago, Kamala Harris held an emergency press conference to tell everybody uh, that she thinks Donald Trump is like Hitler. And she based this off an opinion article over at The Atlantic. So how do you react when the person you want to be president is compared to Hitler? Biden calls for Trump to be arrested less than two weeks before the election. 
And Kamala Harris holds an emergency press conference to tell us about an opinion piece of Trump being Hitler. What is going on with this? The left has gone crazy. They have. They have. And half the country's gone crazy with them because without a viewer, look, you're not going to say something, put on a visual, you know, a show, a visualization of anything unless there's going to be hits, unless there's an audience that is waiting for that to be put to them. They're excited about the message. They're excited about the show. So when you look at what the, the craziness that these folks uh, represent, how they're behaving, what they say, the thoughts that come into their minds, they're doing research. They're analyzing Americans and their tastes and trends and uh, analysis, uh, their choice making. They're working, using that information to make predictions about what messages actually will land the way they need them to. To us conservatives, right-minded, clear-minded people, we just see complete asinine behavior. And it makes no sense to us. But there's others watching and listening that are impressionable. And those are the votes they're going after. You know, I was on a, a debate panel after the uh, vice presidential debate. And I, I said, you know, out of those two candidates, if the independents are sitting there looking for something reasonable to justify them pulling the lever for one or the other, you know, Walt showed complete unreasonableness. He, he was deflecting. And, um, you know, the Republican ticket is showing signs of thoughtfulness and, and clear mindedness. And when it comes to running America as a business, as an organization with lots and lots of needs in it. So when you look at what's coming out of the Democratic side of things, they are doing research, which is also should be scary to us going, wow, there's so many people in the independent zone uh, that haven't decided yet. Um, one of the guests on the panel, uh, you know, said, yeah, that's what, that's what the Democrats are targeting. They're targeting independence. They said they're not to be targeted. They're Americans. And that's, what's missing from the, uh, in between the distance between the right and the left side of the aisle. The left side of the aisle is looking at grabbing hits, grabbing ratings, grabbing people, uh, from, from uh, you know, their messaging rather than having anything be made of substance. And that's what's truly up for grabs here in, a, in less than two weeks is a, a leader, a, a nation, uh, a problem solving thrust, a, a source of thinking and, and, and choice making that comes from substantive things that are real versus illusions and virtual uh, conceptions based on the left from out of the left side, which isn't real. It, they're they're in love with this artificial world of of message and posturing, and the right and certainly Donald Trump is in love with substance. Yeah, well, he builds physical buildings, not digital buildings, right? Uh, exactly. Let me let me flash for my audience. Uh, this is what uh, Kamala put up. Donald Trump is uh, out for unchecked power. He wants a military like Adolf Hitler had and will be loyal to him, not our constitution. He is unhinged, unstable, and given a second term, there would be no one to stop him from pursuing his worst impulse. No wonder they keep trying to shoot this man. Uh, I, I mean, didn't they apologize, send prayers his way? say we need to cool the political atmosphere, and then they go right into him being a Nazi that needs to surround himself with people that will do genocide? Like, they, they, are, un, they are unhinged. They are unstable. They want unchecked power. Am I wrong? Absolutely. You're right. No, that's right. And so there's another thing in psychology, like you can't be speaking of it if you aren't aware of it. And generally what people are aware of is what's in them. So it's already in the Democrats to be saying this. It's like, you know, there's a there's that uh, example of, uh, you know, if you're worried about someone ripping you off, it might be or, or are you getting ripped off everywhere. It might be that you're a character that rips people off already. And that's why you're fearful. You would think, well, if I'm this way, then everyone must be this way. And so they're blinded by their own disillusionment of reality. They are the ones that are seeking the unchecked power. They're the ones that may have, you know, massaged an election four years ago to obtain unchecked power. They're the ones that make choices that bypass the government and the legislature. They're the ones that, you know, perhaps are going to stuff the Supreme Court with more justices if they were to continue to hold this handle of president of the office of the president for more years. 
not the other side. Um, this really is a war. You're watching a war of, of humanity being sucked into a technological, technological existence. You know, if you look at my Substack where I talk about tokenization, that's scary as hell. And when people could think like, well, that'll never happen here. Stop saying that. It is happening here. It's happening everywhere. The Democrats are aligned with the European thought centers of socialism. And Waltz is obviously a proponent of communism, which is just the next aggressive step past socialism. This is a war. I, I want to suggest that if you're voting for Trump, if you're watching this and you're planning on voting for Trump and you know others that are also thinking the same way, make sure they all show up. Make sure they either mail in that ballot or they show up at the polling centers. Don't let anyone get lazy on this one. Don't let anyone sit this one out. Even if you live in a red state, go vote. Make sure your friends and allies and buddies and family members all go vote. If there's teenagers that, that are willing to vote for Trump and they're just think, oh, I might have a basketball game, make sure they vote. This is a war. And you're, we're all the soldiers in this army. We're not leading it, but we're soldiers in this army. And we need to fight with this one tool that we get to use every four years for president. We get to say something. We get to vote. We cannot be lazy this time. We cannot sit this one out. You have to show up. And you try to make sure without pissing anyone off that they also show up. Yeah, yeah. Now, uh, red states only stay red if the people go out and vote red, right? So Yeah, and uh, you see the ones turning purple are the ones where the red voters may not be showing up like they used to. Yeah, yeah. No, that, like my home state of Virginia. Mm, okay. You know, and what sickens me too, just for perspective, pull up an electoral map, national map of the 2020 election. You'll see the country, the land is red. I wish the land could vote. In my home state of Virginia, there's two counties that swing the entire state. They're the ones that on the periphery of Washington, D.C., Fairfax and Loudoun County, Arlington County, I guess as well. Three counties for the entire state. And I know there's more of a higher concentration of people that live in those three counties than the rest of the state. But it's a misrepresentation of the land. The land, America the beautiful, needs its voice back. Yeah, I agree. I've seen, I've seen that map myself. Okay, um, I want to, um, since you and I started talking, gold was around $2,000 an ounce. It's now around $2,700 an ounce. When I started buying gold, it was around $1,600 an ounce. It's been incredible. It makes me feel safe. I haven't had to worry about Joe Biden and his reckless spending. Now, some analysts are saying this thing could go to $2,900. Why is gold on the move? Is this linked to the amount of world debt? Uh, is this linked to government's uh, unchecked amount of currency printing? Why is gold moving like it is? Gold, uh, you know, I'm not a financial advisor nor a trained economist, so not giving anyone advice, just a lay person's opinion. I, I kind of call it the farmer's approach to economics. Um, when you want to understand things that are complicated, just trace them back to their roots because the roots are always simple. So when we look at gold, we would want to think of that as an, an investment that no one really wants. No one wants it. They have to have it. Why do they have to have it? Well, it offers safety. Well, why do we need safety? Well, because we're in a financial world is false. It's under attack. It's not real. If anything comes from printed money, it becomes unreal because the money isn't real. Money isn't paper. Say that a thousand times. Money is not paper. It's not paper. Money is not paper. It's something real. You could use many things to back paper so that the paper is a better way to carry gold and silver or petroleum. You could back your currency by real estate values. There's so many different things you could do, but all of those things that would actually give value to the paper would be real from the earth. Something real, tangible that can't be made out of thin air. The minute money's made out of thin air, everything that it went into is no longer real in the way that the value of it is real. So if this inflationary wind quits blowing out of Washington and Wall Street, then you'll see values recede back to what's real. For example, a million dollar home is really just a $30,000 house. What? 
Yeah, that's how much money, artificial money, pressed against, chased after limited real estate, pushing the price to an unrealistic, unreal level. It's just a measurement. So the higher gold and silver goes, the worse it's getting in the real, in, in you know, in the fake and financial world. The, there's there's an approach that eventually things reach where things all become real again. You like, you know, how long could you have a fish living out of water? You could hook it up to a garden hose, but it isn't a fish anymore, right? It's not doing what it used to do. Our economy used to be based off making stuff. Now it's based off spending money on stuff. That's not sustainable. That's not real. We don't own our economy if we're just a bunch of buyers, if we're not making stuff. Well, we can't make stuff in this country anymore because the printing press causes commodity prices to rise, inflation, which causes the need to have an American worker, his salary, her salary to have to rise. So the companies just look overseas for that labor to be a tenth of what it would cost to make something here. It's the government causing all of these problems. So when you look at gold and silver going higher, gold is truth in money. If it's running higher, you have worsening things to worry about everywhere else there's a dollar. Everywhere else there's a dollar, you have troubles to concern you. Eventually, you have exhaustion from that dollar being printed out of thin air, which means you then have capitulation, where everything still has a price on it. It just isn't going to be anywhere near what you're used to being at. So one way to just quickly understand what you're actually worth in the world is divide your wealth by, the fa by a factor of 33. It would take 33 current 20, 24 dollars to equal the buying power of one dollar in the 60s, in the 50s, in the 40s, when our money was backed by gold, when it was real. And people could say it's so inflexible. I don't care. Do you want to have mansions built on sand that eventually fall back into the sand? Or do you want to build nice homes that never fall apart? I'm for longevity and I'm for the American people. And I'm not for this bullshit that continues to swim throughout our lives created out of Washington and Wall Street because it's not real. But we come to depend on it. We think we're extraordinarily wealthy. If you're worth $33 million on paper, in actuality, in real terms, you're worth a million bucks. Average, generally stated. Yeah. So when gold and silver keeps going higher, you think, well, what is it? Well, it's a bunker. Oh, well, I mean, we're Americans. We don't fear stuff here. You need to fear financial implosion because it, a math problem says it's bound to happen. Math is a language too, and it cannot lie. The dollar's worth 2.7 cents. It's losing two cents of buying power a year. Next year, and whoever's president next year, the dollar ought to be worth about seven-tenths of a penny. Eventually, some things happen that man has no control, no willpower, no you know, bloodied knees from praying. It never happens. It happens. Math doesn't give a damn what you think or feel. Math just cares about math. And the government continues to create bad math chasing after bad math. And that's not going to stop. So the source of the problem isn't going to stop. And that which drives gold and silver higher isn't going to stop either. And eventually, you could see gold at twenty or $30,000 an ounce. I know it might sound ridiculous, but that just means you haven't done much looking into how false our financial world and its values actually are. By example, if the stock market's worth $50 trillion bucks and the entire gold and silver marketplace around the world is $4 trillion bucks, if just 10% of the money were to run out of the stock market into gold and silver, you would cause gold and silver to rotate five, six, seven, ten 10 times what the price currently is today. That's a small move out of, out of Washington, out of Wall Street into Main Street. That's just a small move. Yeah. Well, I, I, I think people understand what you're saying because uh, they see that their dollar doesn't go as far as it used to. They, they feel the effects of Bidenomics, right? All of that printing, all of the money going to these wars, illegal immigrants, it's making their dollar buy less and less and less. And yet gold outside of the government has risen, has gone up. Their dollar has gone down. Their gold and silver has gone up. So, you know, maybe gold and silver aren't a place where you park your everyday money, but retirement, the money you want to live off in the future. Right. Exactly. What a great, what a great place to do that. I appreciate you explaining that because... 
uh, that that makes total sense. It has risen because things in the real world have gotten bad. Right. And, the fundamentals and, are eroding. So like the, just a quick timeline, the dollar's worth 56 cents. The buying power, if the dollar was a stock and it was once worth 100 cents, it was worth 56 cents in the year 2000. Uh, gold was 300. Today, the dollar's worth three cents and gold is 2,700. That's 900% increase in the price of gold. And from 56 cents to three, what is that? Same, practically the same ratio. Yeah. The problem is eventually the game ends. Eventually the dollar's worth zero or a tenth of a penny. It's hard to get to zero, but eventually it's like discontinued. And that's where you hear about CBDC. You see the governments around the world coordinating their efforts to all come out with the CBDC at the same time. They're also talking about tokenization. You know, when you look at this, my recent Substack. The Agora Project speaks to the next version of what it's like to live here on Earth. Tokenization, just quickly for everyone who really does, you know, and it's hard to get your mind around, me too. It's like digitization capture of an entity. So like if I use the Mona Lisa as an example, you could have a Mona Lisa. You can own the NFT, the tokenization of the actual art piece. And it can't, you can't, you know, get into the code and change it. You can't put lipstick on her. So it's a, a complete immutable digital capturing of an entity. Global governments are proposing or moving through and doing the research to eventually tokenize every human being on the planet. Your health records, your trends, your purchases, your, your living patterns, where everywhere you go, your, every, everywhere you drive your car, where you spend the night, all the things you're interested in, bass boats or you know massages, everything you're interested in would be assessed and analyzed. Eventually, also then dovetailing that with cryptocurrency, you know, CBDC to me is a little bit of a misrep. It's not a digital currency. It's a government issued, a central bank issued cryptocurrency. We have digital money today. It's called Venmo. It's called Zelle. It's called sending a wire. So when you look at the change from the analog dollar world to a digitized crypto dollar world, a computerized money world, and dovetail that with the capability of tokenizing humans on earth to understand census data, uh, birth rates, everything down to things divided by race or sex or creed, economic uh, you know, slicing of the information, it's so that the banking and governmental and financial world can can remove the irritants that it feels from us. Mm. Absolute manipulation, monitoring, and massaging of how we make choices and the 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 options that we get to choose from. Like scanning out at the grocery store, your your transactions decline. You got too much red meat in there. It's monitoring how much red meat you consume. A lot of carbon goes into producing red meat. It also causes uh, more higher costs on the health system, just for an example. That's, yeah. what's, that's what we're coming into. We are being sucked into this digital world, and we're about utterly, completely there. You will soon understand what it's like to, to live like a transistor on a motherboard. Wow, that's terrifying. Would, uh, Paul, would a good example of things getting worse be uh, this new, these new reports that the the that Biden is spending a trillion dollars every 100 days. Th that's never Less happened. Than 100 years now. No. Oh my gosh. Yeah. The fa the pace is quickening. So when you like, imagine. Um, you know, it's funny. Led Zeppelin got its name because they they when they just formed, they were whatever named band. And someone wrote a, a critical piece about them in the paper. It said they're certain to fall like a Led Zeppelin. A Zeppelin is a blimp. And if it was made out of lead, it certainly wouldn't fly. But if we watched a blimp catch on fire, you'd see, you know, a little bit of flame. You'd see the thing start to shift how it's flying. And then it would spread and spread further. And eventually it would catch the mother load of the helium inside the blimp and the whole thing would blow up. So the pace of this burning, if you were to visualize America's financial world burning, it's burning so fast now, you literally can't print enough money to keep up with, to, 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 to try and you know, support what's burning, keep it alive. And, and the, the problem truly is that out of the government, the, the, their solutions to problems are actually worse than the problems themselves, coined phrase by Reagan. 
And so the more they go to solve, the faster and harder they push to solve the problem, the bigger and faster the problem gets worse. And eventually you reach a point of exhaustion. And just because the government is thinking of tokenization and thinking of all this crypto dollar crap and managing the world, I don't think they'll ever get to. Just because they think of it and wear nice suits, I'm wearing a nice suit. I'm telling you about the real world. They're telling you about being sucked into an artificial world where there's no problems anymore. That's, that's hooey. That's never going to happen. And they're never going to be able to generate the finances to support it because governments don't create anything. They destroy. They don't create revenue. They destroy revenue from inside the economy with their taxes. And inflation is the ultimate destructive tax. It's because it's a symptom of a, of a choice-making set of ideals that continue on in perpetuity until you hit a hard stop. Printing money to solve problems is as asinine as just handing a six-year-old a college degree. Well, it's on paper. Well, it says, that, yeah, you're, you're, you can do medical procedures. You're six. You can do it. It's, that's exactly what it would be like. Yeah. And giving the government this much power is the same thing as having that six-year-old run the country. A six-year-old couldn't run a farm. Wow. Wow. Well, Paul, uh, this has been a great conversation. I appreciate you coming on. Uh, you know, we're two weeks out from what many hope will be a change. Uh, you know, Trump, there, there's so much that he's going to be able to do. There's a lot that he may never be able to unwind. But with Kamala, uh, I just have no confidence that she is going to make America great or safe. Uh, it's really sad. Let me let me give a shout out to, to your company, um, Colonial Metals Group. Um, if you guys want to learn more about uh, gold and silver, using a self-directed IRA to protect your wealth, uh, th this is a, such a great company. Uh, no pressure, all about education. They make things very, very easy. You guys can call the 800 number or colonialmetalsgroup.com forward slash Gardner. I'll put a link uh, down below. Or if you're watching this on TV, you can uh, take a picture of this QR code or again, reach out to them. But Paul, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you for sponsoring my channel. Uh, when I started talking about the truth about Donald Trump, the dangerous policies of Joe Biden, his dementia, uh, I got hit. Uh, right between the eyes, sponsors abandoning me. Uh, I, I just, I, I can't tell you how grateful I am for Colonial Metals Group. Uh, and you have great insight, which is why I like to have you on as a guest. But uh, any, any final words before we end here? Just two things based a little bit on what you just said. So if you're on a spiritual journey, if your life is built on spiritual principles, you're going to feel resistance and there's going to be challenges against you. And that's how you know you're on the right path. So when you had sponsors leave your show, that's how you know you're on the right path, Mr. Gardner. And you continue on that path. It's going to be hard when you have a life built upon clear vision, spiritual principles, and, and a fortitude to not yield from them. And I feel the same stuff. I, I know the same stuff. I've lived it. I feel it. I know it. The second thing is gold and silver is just a solution to a problem. There's four options for where your money can be. It can be in physical cash in a safe at home, real estate, the financial world, or the vault. That's it. You have two choices, really one, but two choices here in a couple of weeks. There isn't anyone else coming. No one else is running. You have to vote for Trump. Uh, you have to look aside from the personality flaws, if you're finding any, with Donald Trump, and look at the capability. Look at the decision making. Look at actually how much time he spends talking about the American versus the other side, the other option. So when you look at where your money can be, there's four places, you know, really locations or forms that it can take. And the one that you truly possess, you own, is liquid as a phone call, rises during crisis, and you could carry it across a border if you had to, is gold and silver. All I am is trying to offer people awareness of how bad the situation is becoming, how bad it eventually gets from based on history, and the solution to avoiding that hell that comes our way from Rome to today. There's many countries in between that have risen and fallen and governments were in charge of the falling, not the greatness. And we've got that same problem today. Yeah. 
Oh man, you make you make such a great point. I've watched so many Kamala speeches. I've watched so many Trump speeches. Trump talks about what he will do for America, and Kamala talks about Donald Trump. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I, I mean, they're all all roads are pointing to Donald Trump. Even Kamala talks about him all the time, right? But what does he talk about? He talks about America. the American people. I love that. Hey, yeah. thank you very yeah. much. I appreciate you coming on, and I hope you have a great rest of your day. You too. God bless you and God bless America and everyone who's watching. Amen.